uh, Thomas Sloop TM I have with me here. County Legislator, 5th District, Niagara County, Jason Zona. How are you today? Good, Tom. How are you doing? Doing very well. Hey, your thoughts on the community bringing this together on Main Street, Niagara Falls, New York, USA? This is fantastic. Anytime we can get some foot traffic, activity downtown, it's a plus for the city. Look, are you looking down here on a normal Saturday? There's probably not too much going on. And now we have, for two days, we should have a full amount of uh, activity down here. So anytime we can do that, it's a good thing. It's 5th District, Niagara County Legislator, Jason Zona. Thank you, Jay. All right. Live from Niagara Falls, New York, I'm Tom Proctor, the Thomas Luke TM. Have with me the Senator, George Mazier, New York State. How are you today, George? I'm doing great. It's good to be out here. The weather is great. It's uh, one week from the day that Niagara Falls was seen around the world with Nick Melinda. And now we're out here celebrating with some great music, great food, by the way. Everybody to come down. This is what uh, Western New York and Niagara Falls are all about. Music and art. Senator Maziars, any particular music band you like, or you like the one that Corey and Kate are up with? Like playing right now. <laughs> Senator Maziars, thank you very much for your time. Hi, I'm Tom Proctor for Thomas Luke TM. I'm here with Mayor Paul Deister of the City of Niagara Falls, New York, USA. Mayor Deister, thank you very much for your time. Well, there are all kinds of things going on across the City of Niagara Falls. Today we have 3,000 Girl Scouts celebrating the 100th anniversary of scouting down at the Falls. But right now I'm here on Main Street for the second annual Main Street Festival and the assortment of vendors and musical acts that are here. It's absolutely fantastic. Main Street's seen some tough times, but it's on its way back. And thanks to the faith and courage and hard work of all these people, uh, another step is being taken forward uh, today. Uh, we hope everybody, if you don't make it this year, be sure that uh, next year you're back. Uh, for the third annual Main Street Business Festival. Mayor Paul Deister, thank you very much. All right. Wednesday edition of the Thomas Loop, live on all the WNYRadio.com. have with me my sidekick, co-pilot Rico Slayman. You just heard three politicians from the Niagara Falls, state of New York, areas from the Main Street Music Festival in Niagara Falls, New York. I will be recapping that. Uh, the first one was uh, Jason Zona. He is our 5th District Niagara County Legislator for New York State. The second one was Senator George Maziars of New York State. And the last soundbite you have heard was Mayor Paul Deister of the City of Niagara Falls, USA. We're going to, a little bit later, around 8.30, I'm going to be, if you can hear that Olympic uh, theme playing in the background. Yeah, you know, it's cheesy, but we're approaching London on July 27th. The Olympic Games are going to happen. From Eugene, Oregon, I'm going to be interviewing NBC Sports' Dave Ross. He is the spotter that sends whoever's leading the distance races up to the two people up in uh, Tom Hammond, I believe, the White Stones, um, and whoever else working for NBC up there. He's going to be interviewing them. We're going to be interviewing him live from Eugene, Oregon, momentarily, on allwnyradio.com. Rico, thank you for stopping by. Tom, a pleasure to be here. It really is. It's funny to be here. It's kind of crazy. Almost as funny as uh, Mayor Deister saying Main Street in the Falls is on its way back. <laughs> Has he been there lately? He was there. He, yeah, he, he was he, there. He works there. He works on Main Street. Hey, how come my face is the only one on screen here for those online? Well, I'm, I, I'm guessing that you're the better looking guy, and I figured I can't the camera. It's out there. My nose right is him. probably a little bigger. That's all right. Well, you give me a run for, for my money. Good to be <laughs> here, Tom. It really is. It's a pleasure. Thank you. We're going to be talking with uh, Dave Ross once again. He is at the U.S. Olympic Trials for Track and Field in Eugene, Oregon, and uh, he's been covering for NBC Sports. He is the spot for distance runners. Again, he gives the commands to those in the broadcast booth. Who's leading the race? Who's second? Wh you know, what they hear through their earpieces. And my, my thought process is this. I think it's the best perspective available having a guy right on site. I, w I would like to hear what his purpose out there is, what he sees. Does he have to? He's also a coach. He, o he owns uh, Ross Running. He's from, originally from Idaho, I believe. But he's out in Eugene right now. We'll be talking to him momentarily. Also, we're going to recap the Main Street Music and Art Festival that was held 
over this past weekend in Niagara Falls, New York, USA. I have a few tracks lined up. And we're going to go into the first one right now. This is Corey and Kate. They were the first act from two, the 2012 all, uh, oh man, the 2012 Main Street Music and Art Festival here on allwnyradio.com. We'll get back to that momentarily, and I'm gonna pan on. Street Music and Art Festival held over the weekend in Niagara Falls, New York, USA. It's the second annual. Uh, they had people coming from the, the tourist sector, moving, funneling its way toward uh, Main Street. There was artisans, uh, great food vendors, so on and so forth. Earlier you heard uh, Mayor Paul Deister's take on Main Street and Rico's very popular opinion afterward. How was the attendance at the festival, Tom? It, it, was, it was probably double from last year, and last year's was good. That was the first act before... They had what they call the opening ceremony when they brought in um, John Soretto. Uh, he's a uh, oh man. If I, there's people listening across the country here, uh, he's a. Uh, there's not. There are. <laughs> there are. Uh, we're streaming live. There's uh, Paul Mayor, Mayor Paul Dicer. There was um, Senator George Mazier from New York State. Um, Zona. Was, yeah, and then there's Jason Zona, Fifth District uh, County Legislator of Niagara County, New York State. And, yeah, they brought them out, and then they started the festival, and then the attendance really started to pick up afterward. And there, were, there was a side stage with other bands. We'll be playing a track toward the end of the show uh, regarding that. Again, Dave Ross will be uh, up in 15 minutes. We'll be interviewing him live from Eugene, Oregon, for the U.S. Olympic Trials for Track and Field. Later on, about an hour from now, we're going to be interviewing Niagara County historian Chris Stoyanoff. I'm wearing one of his T-shirts right now. He sold from the Nick Melinda Walk. Um, that was an incredible experience being downtown Niagara Falls, USA, being shown basically around the world on ABC. Did you see it at all? You know, I did not. I, I didn't see it. I know it was on television. And uh, I, I kind of lost interest, to be honest, once I found out he was not wearing the harness. Yeah. Kind of took a little of the excitement out of it. But, I mean, there's no denying 
that it brought a lot of attention to Niagara Falls, which is always a good thing. In my experience, uh, we did the official Nick Willando walk party for a venue called Legends uh, Bar and Grill. Uh, there was an, uh, basically a 13-hour music festival, and you could see the crowds gradually funneling to what they call Prospect Point at Gold Island in Niagara Falls, New York, USA, at the, the State Park, the Niagara Falls State Park. And what happened was they bottlenecked backward, where they had all the, they had like a circus-like vending, they had everything set up, they had people juggling, people break dancing, live music in all sorts of areas within, a, I'd say about a, a quarter mile radius of the city. And there were, wow, I remember after we were done by like five o'clock, uh, our, our project was done by five o'clock on stage. What I recall was I would peep in and out because I stayed inside. I went to the site just to check it out. And uh, I came back to uh, the, the official site <coughs> at Legends in, in Niagara Falls, New York, USA, to watch the walk. And if you looked out on Old Falls Street, USA, which is the tour sector of Niagara Falls, for those of you listening, um, not around from here, and there were about an estimated 20,000 people in a short two block, like they were elbow to elbow watching the projection. I've never seen in a city like that And I mean, what the 30 plus years we've been alive i mean yeah that's right that the was, buzz leading up to it i mean the week incredible. the week before uh in my lifetime i couldn't remember anything like that in niagara falls yeah i i and it, and, it, and it as and, and the like the atmosphere when he made the, the other end i wanted to run outside again because i was indoors and uh the place sounded like they won a a championship it was really cool the cheers could be heard for for minutes nobody wanted to leave it took um there were about 150,000 people on Gold Island alone at Prospect Point back. That's were there that many? There were that many, and ABC televised it worldwide, and it was just great to be a part of it. It was really cool. Um, yeah, I saw a couple of interviews with Walenda yeah. at Post Walk and just on television, and I liked what he had to say. He seemed like a real likable guy, which yeah. makes it even that more, uh, I guess, enjoyable. You like the guy, so you root for the guy, and hopefully, I heard the Grand Canyon is next. Yep, without the harness. Without the harness, he so signed on, and then everything was funded outside of them. I think believe that I believe ABC paid for his setup, but everything else was outside funding. It was none of you know. He didn't ask for tax dollars. He didn't ask for anything else. Everything was just it was just it was unbelievable how it turned out, and I I just hope there's not that period of forgetting what that was like and then getting back to the norm of what the city currently is in its state and uh maybe they can you know the those those that be in the in the uh administrative parts of uh, niagara falls and niagara county could just like review something and then do something similar to that over the summer for tourists in niagara falls new york usa some kind of follow-up to that would yeah. be important yeah I, I think it's that i think the follow-up to that that event is probably the most important it really is i mean to uh the momentum that that created to build on that would be important for the city a big boost but honestly in the week and a half since the walk or the week plus what do you think about you know how the, the energy level or the the, 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 the this, mood in the city the tourists will come they do they, they take a two-day span having worked in the tourist business for over a decade uh, they're going to come now depending how long they stay it's such a fast turnover we know the tourists are going to be here but how are we going to bring them back to that for example the main street district how are we going to bring them back and that festival is another thing it's festival season in the area they centralize them, and it's a great idea what Old Falls Street USA is, and they're signed under Comcast. Global Spectrum, I believe, is the company. It's great what they're doing and what Joe Anderson of Legends is doing and, the, you know, the coexisting hotels, the casino. It, it, they do keep the people there for a little while, but it's a two-day turnover. How do you figure out beyond that? What do you need to learn from that? So I just think we should just go back to some music. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good, Tom. I, I don't segue. It's what I do here. <laughs> hey, you're in the Thomas Loop. I'm Tom Proctor, co-piloting with uh, Rico Slayman here to my left. We're streaming live on Ustream under all WNY Radio, the Thomas Loop. We're on demand 24 hours a day after the broadcast. Podcast out toward the weekend. You could also give us a call, area code 716-402-4218. Uh, the show before us, Noah's Ark, 
the flagship show of all WNYRadio.com, heard from 6 until 8 Wednesdays the day before. You have on uh, Tuesdays, Candyland Countdown from 6 to 8. And after that, Sippin' Scotch with Scat Jones. I love that title. I love that title. It runs from 8 to 10 here from all WNY Radio Studios here in Buffalo, New York. We're broadcasting live. And again, the, bro- the podcasts are out on iTunes and FeedBurner. You can access it. It's free to download on iTunes. You just look up allwnyradio.com podcast network on iTunes, and there it is. We're going to get back into the music, more from the Main Street Music and Art Festival here at allwnyradio.com. Thank you.
Frank Rizzanti Band, live from uh, Niagara Falls, New York, Main Street Music Festival over the weekend on June 23rd and 24th. That was the June 23rd band, Frank Rizzanti. Over, I believe over 25 bands played the two-stage set over the weekend from Niagara Falls, New York, USA. We're in the Thomas Soup in about four minutes from now. We're going to be calling Dave Ross from NBC Sports and uh, RossRunning.com. He's also a coach for distance runners from the mile up. And I've been speaking with him regarding training. And he's very knowledgeable of his work. He's into his 50s, and he's kicking butt, taking names. Impressive. Yes. Yes, he doesn't look it on his Facebook page. Guys, check out his Facebook page. There's a like page called Ross Running. And uh, like I said, we'll be calling Dave Ross. And there's an off day for the Olympic trials in Eugene, Oregon. He's on a schedule for NBC. The trials resume, I believe, tomorrow. And, I mean, track town usa what kind of what kind of an awesome gig is that i mean if you're a track guy from this country that's where you want to be you know so um have you seen the trials at all or just just a little bit just uh actually you showed me a clip i believe on youtube there yeah was that from that was probably the, probably the new york city grand prix the adidas grand prix from new york when, gotcha uh, i think it was that one and i i know distance running is boring to a lot of people a lot of yes. people don't get it or don't like it but yes. those into it i mean it is uh it's a it's, it's an, a beautiful thing it's a cult following almost um uh, with london coming up it becomes more visible london is july 27th for the olympic games and you know the, the trials are being held through this weekend in eugene oregon at the fade let the famous hayward field right on eugene oregon the founding area of nike incorporated and um 2012 I, olympics i i mean i think my most memorable olympics were 96 in atlanta <laughs> just that whole event i mean and it's what 16 years ago which that's a good chunk of time but you have had an experience with the torch run yeah i did actually i i did right in niagara falls new york I ran through downtown yeah as, a, as the torch came through uh myself and and Patrick, your brother, yeah. got to run with it. And, uh, yeah, that was neat just to be a part of that, maybe run five miles with that torch. But I guess just that summer in general, summer yeah. of 96. Yeah, in the United States hosting the summer games. you know, And then, of course, came Salt Lake City with the, the 2002 games. But this meant, I mean, the 96 one is memorable. Maybe I don't, it's I don't just remember much than 2002, but I think it was just the summer games. It's the games that started the other games down the road right and I, I think it just the the point where you are in your life I mean what's going on in your life at that time would determine what you remember most and what you don't remember yeah yep so the summer of 96 was a good summer for me yeah we were, we were early 20s yeah I was 20 yeah, yeah 20 and then 97 it all went to hell but 96 <laughs> was great <laughs> All right, we're going to call via Skype. Area code 716-402-4218 is the number. We're calling Dave Ross of NBC Sports from Eugene, Oregon. He is on site for the Olympic track trials at the University of Oregon Hayward Field at allwnyradio.com. Please leave a message after the beep. And we will get back to him momentarily. Just had a phone issue here. We're going to try it again. Rico, your thoughts on the Yankees losing Andy <laughs> Pettit oh boy. to an injury. Now, we'll, we'll straighten this out. Yeah, great time filler. I don't know. Injuries happen, especially to 40-year-old guys. You just carry on, that's all. You think he's going to retire? They'll reload. Yeah, I, I, I didn't think he should have unretired. I mean, but I guess... I guess an 88-mile-an-hour circle change still works these days. Well, when you like something, yeah. and then it, you don't have it anymore, and you miss yeah. it, and then you're ass back, or you know you can come back, I guess it would be difficult to say no. Yeah. Yep. And but it's CC's out, and the Yankees have always needed pitching over the past decade or so. Sure, they'll so. they'll reload, but, <laughs> yeah, pet it. You get to a point. And the injury to Rivera at the beginning when he – when he blew out his knee, oh, man. you hate to see that happen. And I hope he does come back. He says he will, but wants to close the season. We'll see. Yeah, but it's hard to feel bad for these guys. It really is. <laughs> We're gonna try again. Be Give it a try.
This is Dave. Dave Ross, welcome to allwnyradio.com, the Thomas Loop on air radio show. Dave Ross is working for NBC Sports for the U.S. track and field trials held in Eugene, Oregon, and the famed Hayward Field. How's your experience so far down there? We've seen some fantastic races, uh, despite the weather. Uh, obviously, the 10,000 uh, went on the other night in uh, somewhat of a downpour. But uh, times, you know, you've got Olympic trials records being set in uh, many of the events. Uh, fastest American uh, time ever run, you know, in the 10,000 meters in the Olympic trials. Yeah. The great competitions, world record in the decathlon. So far, it's been fantastic. Now, you're the spotter for NBC Sports that sends, you know, the, the numbered, bib-numbered race, racers during the long-distance um, uh, trials and prelims and then the final races, and they send it directly. Do you get a – what is your perspective from on-site, from what you're doing at that moment, shooting up the names and numbers of the athletes to those in the booth? What is that like? Is it high pressure? Uh, not especially. I'm really familiar with, uh, the distance running scene and who the runners are. So, um, without even having to reference the sheet and, and the bib numbers, um, I pretty much know who they are. So it's not a lot of pressure. It's just, it's, it's actually really exciting to be down there and get that perspective and be that close to the races. So you're able to assess racing tactics and be able to tell the, those in the booth what's going on at the same time. That's pretty cool. Exactly. I feed the uh, I feed what's going on as far as lead changes and sort of what's going on in the race to the uh, the people that you actually see on air for NBC. And I saw the the ten thousand men's final in particular, and Ritzen Ritzenheim. I've never seen him race like that. He took that race out very hard uh, to the front, forced the pace early, and then his teammate Galen Rupp took over. And then they were trading off. And then you had the surgeon, Tegan Camp, sitting in the back. And he's a great, great closer. I, I'm amazed at his transition from the 5 to the 10. Him note, noteworthy, getting the second spot into the Olympic team. Your thoughts on that? Well, Dathan had to get an A qualifier. He was one of the few guys in the race. If he didn't get an A qualifier in that race, he wasn't going to go to London because there were other guys that had A qualifiers. So he had to run under 27.45 in the race. So, and obviously he trains with Galen under Alberto Salazar. So um, Galen was helping him out a little bit with the pace, I think, um, helping his teammates get that A standard. And, uh, yes. you know, Tegan Camp uh, snuck in there. He trains with a different group in Portland. He trains with uh, Derry Schumacher's group. Right. Um, but uh, those guys, uh, you know, obviously worked together and, and helped out with the pace. And like I said, the end result was Galen getting uh, an Olympic record, or uh, Olympic trials record, I right. should say. That's right. Radio.com. the Thomas Loop, heard streaming live on Ustream right now. You'll be able to see us on demand 24 hours a day. And, uh, Dave, how long have you been in the sport of distance running? What got you into this business? Uh, I turned out for cross country uh, when I was a, a gangly freshman back in high school and uh, ran cross country and track all through high school and college. Um, got into coaching at the uh, high school level in the mid-90s and uh, Pretty much coaching age group, high school track, everything uh, since then. And then in the last two or three years, uh, I've had enough requests uh, that basically I started my own coaching business. So now I coach primarily, I have a couple of high school kids, but I coach primarily uh, marathoners, all ages and abilities. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of people looking mostly to get things like Boston Marathon qualifying times. And uh, we've had really, really good luck with that. So far, uh, I've got about six uh, Boston qualifiers, and I should have four or five more within the next uh, next six months before the race opens up for registration. And you yourself basically practice, practice what you preach. You yourself, you're a distance runner in the 50 and up age group. Is that correct, 50 to 54? Uh, no, I'll be I'll be forty five. Forty five. I'm sorry, my, oh. my, I'm a little off with the years. My fault. My fault. Forty five. And so, how yep. long have you um, been employing these uh, tactics to the athletes? And how long has your business been in place? Uh, my business itself, my coaching business, like I said, really only really only a couple of years now. 
Um, but as far as, yeah, I do. I, I practice what I preach. Actually, a couple of my guys, um, we ran the, the Newport, Oregon Marathon on uh, June 2nd. And uh, so a couple of guys that I coached, neither one of them had broken three hours before. One guy is 34 years old, uh, the other guy 31. And uh, so they needed Boston qualifiers. So that was our goal was for me to drag them under three hours. Right. And uh, we were successful that uh, one guy got a 10-minute PR and the other guy got a 14-minute PR. And we all went under three hours. So I know they were pretty stoked. Hey, Dave, I have with me my, my – uh, I have a guest in studio who is – Experienced qualifying for the Boston Marathon and finished it a few years ago, I believe, in 2009. His his name is Rico Slayman. Do you have any questions for Dave? Yeah, Dave, pleasure, pleasure to talk with you. Thanks for coming on. And my question, yeah, thanks. My question to you is, what is your most memorable race or most memorable marathon that you've participated in? Uh, that would have to be where I set my, uh, my marathon PR, which was, uh, Portland, Oregon in, uh, 1996 and, um, feeling, feeling pretty fit. I'm not a super high mileage guy, but I do a lot of, uh, high quality stuff, uh, fast paced tempo runs, that sort of thing. And, uh, was on pace to run roughly, uh, 231 through about 20 miles before my wheels fell off a little bit and ended up running 236. So, uh. I was I was pretty pleased with that, and that uh, remains my PR to this day. And uh, so, definitely, my, that would be my most memorable race. Impressive, yeah. And you talked about coaching guys who just went under three hours, and that's a personal goal of mine uh, to get under three. So, who knows? Maybe you'll have another uh, <laughs> another business adventure in me. Maybe I'll give you a call, and you can give me some tips there. Now, your personal best, yeah. Rico, your personal Definitely. best. Yeah, cool. What is your personal best, Rico, one more time? 310.20. And that got him in the Boston in 2009, I believe, right? Yeah, 2008. 2008. 2008, I ran it out in Phoenix. and then. Uh, well, the difference between my business and, and I think a lot of other people uh, is uh, that I make accommodation because the people that I coach have – have lives, you know, they have full-time jobs, a lot of them have kids, and so it's not like these people are running, you know, 100-mile weeks or whatever. This is, these are realistic programs based off of, uh, you know, probably 50 to 60-mile weeks uh, is where they top out as far as an average, but it's a lot of structure um, and a lot of quality, um, depending on the individual. Um, you know, there's a little bit of variance, but it, it allows people to meet their goals with without having to give up some quality of life in other areas, you know, spending time with their families and, you know, not subtracting from their jobs. Uh, you know, it, it's a good balance is what it is. Dave Ross, going back to the trials before we get you to plug your, your business for, for everyone out here, um, the 5,000 coming up, uh, what are your thoughts for the men's 5,000 and particularly the 37-year-old Bernard Lagat? and uh, Lopez Lemong and all the big guns ready to go for the final? I I would have to pick, you know, Rupp to be up there again. Um, and Legat, I, I would be actually pretty surprised if Legat's not in the top two. Lemong, you know, um, he had that one great race, obviously some miscounted laps uh, that went on there. But yeah. he's looked really, really inconsistent in some 1,500 and mile races since then. Um, and I, I don't know. I think Bumbleo has a really good chance of getting in the top three. Um, it wouldn't shock me if we, if we don't see Lamong in the top three at all. I just don't think he's been consistent this year other than that one race. Yeah. And I think what, I think what's happening in, in most of the distance races you see, and you see Mo Farrell win championships this way is yeah. you see this gradual increasing of the pace over the last 800 to a thousand meters where I think we're going to see something like a, a 58 second penultimate lap followed by a 54. You know, I yeah. think we may see like a 152 last it, 800 meters. It is it uh, is great to see this country catching up finally. No pun intended to the rest of the world. Like these runners can actually medal. Uh, particularly Galen Rupp in the tent. Of course, Legat's always a medal contender, but Galen Rupp is like he's got to be one of the medal favorites going into uh, London. And Galen looked fantastic in the in the ten thousand. I mean, you know, despite setting that Olympic trials record, he looked easy. He was, you know, had the race won, 
with 100 meters to go. He's relaxing, waving to the crowd, big smile on his face. He had a lot left in the tank. You know, when he made that separation and got it, then he was able to relax. And, uh, you know, obviously the guy's running 26.48, so I, I'm pretty excited to yeah. see what he's going to be able to do That's in London. That's remarkable because he is at par with the best in the world, and that just tells you right then and there. The race that stood out to me was how well Nick Simmons planned that 800-meter race, the final. He stayed closer to the trailing pack than he did in the past on that first lap, that critical 400 to 600 move that, that he is. He was closer to the front, and it seemed like he made it look so easy pulling away for that win. That one really stood out to me. I think he's learning. I, I think you're right, and he realizes that he can't lay as far off of the pace that he used to do. Um, in the semis, I was actually a little surprised because uh, Tyler Mulder just buried Nick yeah. in the semi, and Mulder looked great. And I thought Mulder would be, you know, one of the top three guys, but I guess he got boxed in a bit in the final. But, yeah, Nick's 143.92 was fastest ever run by an American at Hayward Field. And that was just a remarkable – the, the time didn't really – like, the, the race in and of itself, the way he did it amazed me more than his time. I know he's going to probably run faster than 143, the fastest ever run in Hayward Field. But just watching that race unfold and taking to note that he did trail off the pack in the past – International events, uh, keeping him out of the metal hunt. And it, this, this, he's just savvier. He's just, he's better. He's better, and he's continuously getting better. It was just a, an outstanding race to watch. I really enjoyed it. Well, and I think you know, you you follow guys like David Radisha, who's yep. the world record holder and and basically unparalleled in 800 meter running. And that guy's going to go out and he's going to run, you know, 50 seconds first first lap, and basically he's not going to slow down very much, and so. Uh, I think Nick is aware that he uh, needs to change his tactics and, you know, go out, stick close to Radisha, and if there's any chance of anybody beating the guy, they have to be close to him, you know, with, you know, halfway through the race. They can't wait and, and wait for their big kick the last 100 meters or whatever the case may be and, right. and try to run Radisha down because he's not going to slow down. <laughs> he's not. That 141.09 was remarkable. Uh, the one event right now that I'm sort of – on the fence in predicting, outside of Central Woods of trying to get there, uh, is the men's 1500, the prelims to be tomorrow, I believe, three separate heats. Who are you picking? The guy who's been the most consistent this year would be David Torrance. He was the yeah. top American at the Prefontaine meet. He uh, ran really well, third place overall at the uh, Adidas meet in New right. York. Yep. Uh, has the fastest American mile time this year at, I believe, 352.09. Uh, I'd be real surprised if he wasn't there to mix it up. Um, Centro's coming off some injuries, yeah. and I believe he's just turning the corner, rounding back into shape, and he's uh, obviously a big event racer, um, does well when it counts. And then you uh, can't count out Andrew Wheating. Uh, right. Another guy didn't run real well at the pre-meet, had some injuries last year, but then went up to Canada, ran a, a fantastic race to win up there, yeah. uh, which I think gave him a lot of confidence. Yeah. Right in his backyard now, he gets to let it fly again. Yeah. But the 1500 is going to be a little bit of a crapshoot because yeah. there haven't been, haven't been – you know, a lot of guys that have been really, really consistent this year, other than Torrance. Yeah. So uh, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be a, a great event. All WNYRadio.com, the Thomas Loop heard on Wednesdays. We're streaming live on Ustream under all WNYRadio.com. Just click on that. You'll see the Thomas Loop. I'm on Facebook, uh, Twitter, and Dave Ross, once again, explain to the listeners what your business is all about, anything that you would think that would be advantageous for you to help others? Uh, basically what I do is uh, I, I coach people of all ages and abilities from everything from the mile to the marathon. Uh, uh, past successes I've had, I just uh, had a kid graduate from high school, three-time Idaho State champion in 3,200 meters, that's a state record at 3,200 meters a senior year there. Um, I coach age groups. I've got a 62-year-old gal that's uh, looking to qualify for uh, Boston, which she should do pretty easily. 
Uh, a lot of people have taken up running later in life that weren't uh, maybe competitive runners in their younger years and and suddenly have discovered a love or, or maybe a talent for running and decide that they want to do something with the sport. And so uh, having a lot of good success with uh, folks, you know, in their early to mid-40s who are, uh, like I said, weren't competitive younger but now are looking at things like Boston Marathon qualifiers and looking to have some great running experiences at this point in their life. Dave Ross, thank you very much for spending time with us here at AllWNYRadio.com. You have an extremely busy schedule, and I will definitely be contacting you soon. Sounds good. Thanks for your time. Hey, take care. All right. Dave Ross of NBC Sports at AllWNYRadio.com. What are your thoughts on that? Oh, that was that was cool. He's Just a, to he's a class act. talk distance running and then in-depth distance running, yeah. which probably bores a lot of people to tears but if you're into it i mean it's just you're just talk you're just saying it was real yeah, talk no just talking about it yeah it, you're just right you're dead on it gets you a little pumped up makes you want to go for a run it yeah. really does <laughs> so I, I look forward to even watching uh the trials and in, in the olympics just watching watching them on the track is uh it's just neat to see how uh how a race develops and when people make their moves and then that last 400 meters it yeah, it's going to be just unbelievable. AllWNYRadio.com, the Thomas Loop heard Wednesdays, 8 p.m. Uh, we're streaming live on Newstream. You can give us a call at area code 716-402-4218, which is also a 24-hour-a-day hotline. You can leave a message. We can call you back if you have requests for CDs or which show you would like to select from, like Noah's Ark, Candyland Countdown, Sippin' Scotch with Scat Jones. Myself, personally, I'm also on Facebook, Twitter, and uh, under the Thomas Loop TM, just registered the trademark a couple months ago, and uh, we're up for uh, several awards in music. Uh, my personal project, Acoustic Mile, with a gifted and talented guitarist singer, Aaron M. He goes by. He doesn't want to. We're former teammates in college, but he's also a state employee, a city employee for uh, some sor sort of a teaching district in Erie County, so in bu right around the Buffalo, New York area, for those of you. And um, we're up for the best acoustic act for WBNY uh, station, 91.3, I believe, in Buffalo, New York. They have awards every year. And uh, this show is up for an award for best broadcast podcast. And, you know, just having the opportunity to sit sitting down and doing this, you know, you, you meet through networking. I met the former owner here, Scott, uh, Scott Leffler. He and I go back several years. I pitched to him. He pitched to the current owner, Noah Goki. I asked him to do a show in February of 2011, and here we are today and with a brand and a great guest in Rico Slayman, and we bring in the music guests. Uh, we interview media personalities, um, coaches, athletes, you name it, and it was just spawned up from experience being a journalist, an athlete, and a coach, and other things, and uh, public relations, uh, the background, and I, and this is, I'm very appreciative of having this opportunity to do it here at All WNY Radio in Buffalo, New York. And here we are. And here we are. Hey, when is your uh, next show with the Acoustic Mile, Tom? Do the you have something show, scheduled there? We are playing Carl Palladino, who is uh, very well known in our area in the state. He ran for governor. We're playing in his hotel, the Giacomo, 222 First Street, July 6th at 7.30 p.m. And... Uh, few days that we may be playing in uh, Four Points Sheridan outside uh, Niagara Falls, New York, along Buffalo Avenue, along the Niagara River and the patio. We're finding out confirmation regarding that. And we'll be playing in this beautiful village of Lewiston, New York. It is north of Niagara Falls along the Niagara River in this place called Hops and Vines. It's located on Center Street. For those of you who are coming into town, uh, it's in Lewiston, New York on Center Street. I believe it's located, the address is 490 Lewiston, uh, New York. And we'll be playing there for three hours from 8 p.m. to 11. When is that one at the uh, at Hops and Vines? That is July 13th. 13th, okay. From 8 to 11. Uh, it's been a great ride. You know, it's a, it's a smooth transition. Mike Krish, the, Mike and I played for quite a while. We decided to take other directions. And it was a very seamless transition. I was able to take three months away from it, try and build back up the business. We support each other. Um and, you know, it's just the way it should be in the, in the business of music. It shouldn't be as cutthroat as it usually is. So we're going to get back into music, and we're going to talk to Chris Stoyanoff, Niagara County, New York State, 
Uh, he is the historian of Niagara County, and uh, we'll talk about his business, NiagaraHub.com. It is a media, like a media fusion of like several interviews. You see videos, you see news reports. Uh, he works with Tim Schmidt and uh, another gentleman named Craig Avery. Uh, coincidentally, Chris and I were journalists. We were writers for uh, Greater Niagara Papers years ago, and Tim Schmidt was my boss, and he was the former uh, sports anchor, Channel 7, WKBW in Buffalo, New York. He was the former sports editor at the Niagara Gazette and all of Greater Niagara Papers, the, the network there. We're going to be speaking with Chris momentarily at 9.15 p.m. We're going to get back into music from the Main Street Music and Art Festival on allwnyradio.com, and we'll be back. I want to dedicate this to all you lovers out there. Oh, man. That's a classic. That's all right.
that was next level. They were one of the popular ones at all WNY. They're playing on all WNYRadio.com live, but that was from the Main Street Music and Art Festival for 2012 held in Niagara Falls, New York, USA. Next level were very popular, and it was the. Fr- I'm giving you a lot of tracks from the first day of the festival, in which I was uh, co emceeing along with uh, Becky Marchetti. She did an outstanding job with compiling bands at the side stage, and Mark Novelli put all these bands together in the main stage and I, I generally stayed in the main stage it was uh running back and forth making announcements up the mic that was my first time ever i'm seeing and that was a that was a pretty cool experience seems like just from the few tracks we've heard from the festival a wide variety yeah of yeah. Uh, musicians and, and styles of music and that's the credit to those who put it together i mean they had two different promoters and uh, one of them happened to be, happened to be, I'm throwing a Carlin line out there, <laughs> we don't even know it, uh, was on every station and Good Morning America on the day of the Walenda Walk, uh, Becky Marchetti was, in, in, and she did an incredible job. It was her first year ever doing this uh, at any sort of level of music. She's just a music fanatic and people grown to, to get along relationship-wise with her enough to be confident enough to say, yeah, let's play for her. Let's play. And uh, we have, um, I'll be playing a track from one of the hosts of the Candyland Countdown, the 2012 Hard Rock Rising Champions from our Niagara region, uh, the Whiskey Reverb. I'm excited to play this. It's a genuine cover. Uh, imagine a full five-piece band doing a hip-hop tune that sounds really good. Candyland Countdown is heard 6 to 8 p.m. Tuesdays at allwnyradio.com. And I can't wait to play that tune later on. <laughs> and about 15 minutes from now, we'll be speaking with Chris Stoyanoff of NigerHub.com and StensTV.com. Uh, he's just, he does everything, graphic design. Again, I'm going to take a step away and have you look at this T-shirt. It's a design from him. Yes, it's a shameless plug. And that's all right. I'm all right with it. I'm going to walk over here. This is from the Nick Willenda Walk. Uh, the logo you can see, if possible. Yeah, there it is. You got it there? Yep, it's on there. Here, come sit on my lap. (laughs) (laughs) The family version of all the (laughs) way Oh, Uh, boy. Yeah, you can see the Niagara Falls, then the the Nick Willenda logo above it, and he sells that shirt at a very reasonable price. We'll have him explain that, but he's also the county, Niagara County historian from New York State, and uh, he just does a remarkable job with the history and the current state of Niagara Falls, New York, USA. Looking forward to speaking with him momentarily. Um, hey, you know, let's like non segue. Football's coming up. <laughs> oh boy. Hey, just quickly with that shirt. Where does he? Where do you get that? I, I, I would like to get one to be honest with you. you. Are they online from, or? You, get, you could get maybe it we'll from ask the, him when he's on. Yeah, he'll 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 plug it. But you could get it from the Niagara Hub site on Main Street. I I can. He'll give you the address. Okay. It's right across the street. Um, just a couple blocks in the Rainbow Bridge across the street from, I'm thinking landmarks from the, the Postal Service building, the old school Postal Service building in Niagara Falls, New York. And going back to the NFL. <laughs> it's like we're 10 years old again. You know, this is great. Yeah. But we get to talk to him. That's we get right. To talk about That's it. That's right. Who doesn't love the NFL oh, anyway? Oh, man, it is its own empire. It could probably run the world <laughs> with Roger Goodell at president. Yeah. Who's pride and joy of jamestown new york also is he home, really yep also the home didn't know of that. the late great lucille ball okay yes roger goodell <laughs> and lucille ball in the same sentence uh this controversy at, of the new orleans saints the bounty the suspensions to former buffalo bills head coach greg williams yes we are uh, streaming live from buffalo new york i had to bring that up and the guy I feel most for is Drew Brees. He practically single-handedly saved the city of New Orleans to give him hope, like as, as sure. a sports fan. And why not give him the long-term contract? He's won you the Super Bowl. He's going to the Hall of Fame. He was a Super Bowl MVP. He broke the NFL record by miles, 5,400-plus yards passing. And what's taking so long? I know what you mean, Tom, and again, I'll repeat something I said earlier. It's hard to feel sorry for a guy making multi-millions of dollars, but in the case of Drew Brees, he's worth, you know, he, he's worth top dollar, and he should be 
treated in that way, even though he doesn't need the money or right. he's not, you know, he's... What he's done, he's, even as a resident, he lives in New Orleans, originally from Austin, Texas, but he lives in New Orleans. He, he visits pubs like just a regular sure. Joe, but only he's not so regular. He's like 5'10 and throws 70-mile-an-hour darts. <laughs> but, but, you know, he's, he's, he's a community service guy, too. I mean, he, he's, I'm, I just picture Ryan Miller in a football jersey and cross him over. He wins a Super Bowl. For, like, he's the face of the NHL out here in Buffalo, New York as a Buffalo Sabre. Now, times 300, Drew Brees, and he does the same thing Ryan Miller does. Yeah, if anyone should get the money, Breeze should get it. And why they're jerking him around the way they are, I really don't know. It doesn't make sense. It's not not a good PR move for the Saints. And you you figure with everything negative going on, they could They need him this year. He they is do. the guy. He is the he is the face of the franchise. And maybe it could have been because of the pending scandal. Maybe they did know what was going on ahead of time. And maybe that's why he's been – at first he was very verbal about it, and then he backed off because they probably explained to him, like, hey, we have a pending scandal going on, and, you know, maybe, you know, we should just keep it down low and see what happens as a result. Of course, like, players and coaches were suspended, and Greg Williams indefinitely, and Peyton a year, and another coach a half a year, who was the interim head coach. So now they have to use another coach under the interim head coach before the eighth game of the season. It's just a mess. And just thinking, we were Cowboys fans. <laughs> Sorry, people. <laughs> I've in since... 1989, Buddy Ryan openly had bounties on football players to take guys out. Bounty Bowl, anyone? How come that is never mentioned? It's, a, it's totally different now. It's a different era. Yeah, 20, but... 25 years, almost 25 years later. Yep. Yeah, different era and different... Media, different social sure. media. But think about it. What it's gone in a quarter of a century to this point. I mean, it was openly noted that the, the, the Eagles players were trying to take out the Dallas Cowboys. I think with the injury issues I, I th and the concussions, I really think that's why they're Cracking just up. trying to crack down and put an end to it all, Absolutely. Wh which makes sense. I mean, you talk – I was never so shocked, really, as I was when the day Junior Seau – Passed away. Yeah. yeah, when he died and they said it was a suicide. I mean, you just – that stuff sticks with you. And uh, The former son, or former offensive lineman for the Pittsburgh Steelers, too, died in his van. Uh, was that, remember, was when it was Webster? that? Webster? Was it Mike Webster? Yes. I believe it was. There was another Steeler, too. I mean, it's just – Dave Durison, right. same way, took his – and it, it's just not – it's not an isolated incident anymore. It's and, time and time again, and, the, and that's why. They want to put an end to it, and I get that. And I think the Saints, they put themselves in that situation. Even if – the man, what a stiff penalty, but, you know, you got to you gotta make a point. Yeah, you got to make a point, and I don't think – I don't think it will happen again. I highly doubt it. And also the way going back, like Dorson and the way Seau took their lives – they left their brains to science mm -hmm. because they realized they were damaged for life. I mean, I mean, oh my gosh! I mean, wow, that that one really stood out. That one hit my. That was a pit in my stomach when I heard the way they did it. Sure, like they designed the way they wanted to. Right to keep their brains intact. So even, you know, in in their own kind of thought p pattern, they were trying to help others. You know, even though they were, they were struggling and wanted to end their own lives, they still wanted to help others and. There's something to be said for that. But Seau, oh. I mean, he was just, when you think the best linebacker of the last 20 years, yep. he's in the conversation yes. without a doubt and probably at the top of the list. Top he, three. Yeah. I don't know who else would come to mind, but definitely Seau would. And, and this is clouding up the off season. We're supposed to be looking forward to the season. We don't know what the teams are really doing in the off season, unless you look at you know the major sports networks. But outside of it, it's just clouding it. It's just, it's a big gray cloud, and you can't really see through it yet. And I just hope it calms down before the season gets underway and training camp starts in July. I think so too. But you hear it all the time, and it, yeah, it's just sad. Yeah, but there is no off season really. The NFL that is, is correct. It really is. I mean, front and center and. To change gears just a bit before our next guest comes on, I, I saw, and I didn't hear too much about it, but that college football, the BCS system, was changing, which a four-team playoff, is, I think is what I read. I didn't hear it too is, much about it. It goes in effect 
in 2014. Now, I think the, the BCS still is afraid to lose their grip. I think they're trying to appease the general fan and the revenue stream from the sponsors. They have yet to figure out the proposed 16-player playoff team format. Mm -hmm. uh, so they went down the four and would be selected from the committee. So the BCS is going to select them from a computer anyway, one through four. <laughs> yeah, it's, 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 it's almost insulting to the average fan, in my opinion. Sure, and if I've learned one thing, it's you can't appease everybody. So you just got to go ahead and, and do what you do. Half the people like it, half probably won't. But I, I'm a 14 playoff, I'm in favor of that. I just, I'm in more in favor than it wasn't, but it's a little insulting because it is kind of like here, you know, we're – we're going to give this to you, and here's the catch. It happens for the next 10 years starting in 2014. Yeah, change in this case is good, so I look forward to that. And that kind of turned me off to college football, that whole the way everything was done. And uh, I don't know, that maybe this will bring on some new fans. We'll see what happens. Hopefully, and uh, I would doubt even the playing field because your major branding, because now with the limitations in scholarship in Division One. You're basically producing a brand for your team, for the Alabamas, the LSUs, you know, the Alabama Smash Mouth. So you still have to produce that for Alabama, and you have Coach Saban over there. You have less mile LSU. Everything's predicated around speed. So you, LSU is associated with speed. The SEC, the conference, speed. You have the Big Ten, the Bruisers. You still have to brand your tradition, and that's the most difficult part in the sport of college athletics is the recruiting aspect, and it still doesn't – all together, even that playing field, because that playoff format isn't there yet. Right. It's a four-team tournament. Yeah, that's right. It, it'll improve upon the current system. Right. By how much, who knows, but it'll be, it'll be better than what it was. I got to laugh. I, just, I was telling the story earlier today, but I know I would always bust your chops. I, you're better with dates than me, but the, I want to say it was 2002, National championship game, Miami, Ohio State. Yes. And that pass interference call. The bear hug? <laughs> yeah, the bear hug. Oh, my goodness. Changed the outcome of the game. The, I don't know. I, the ref waited to throw the flag till the absolute last second. The last the second. He waited. He waited. Right when the fireworks are going off for the Fiesta <laughs> yeah. for the national championship. Oh, and that, the, Miami's 32 game, Miami Universe, University of Miami. Yeah. Correct myself because there's Miami University of Ohio. It's, this is the University of Miami of Coral Gables in Florida. Number one team, 32 <laughs> win streak intact. 32 game win streak, yep. The bear hug, the flag after the fireworks. And then the last sight I remember is poor Ken Dorsey getting his face smashed into the <laughs> turf in the last play of the game, and then people coming up the, from the other team. Sure. Pick up this poor bloodied guy, and it was it was a the overtime format. The, the overtime format was in place. Now, just refresh my memory. The pass interference was called on Miami. That is right. On Chris, it Chris Gamble, and it gave it gave Ohio, Ohio State, State another chance, chance to tie the game. Exactly. And the, and they did, and then went on to win it. And, yeah, it was – I mean, it, it seemed like minutes yes. before that official threw the flag. Wow. But I'll have to watch it. I haven't seen it in a long time. But it's funny, it, it, ten, almost 10 years later, you still talk about it. Yeah. You still laugh about it. It still brings people together. And that's why, that's why man. sports are cool. Yeah, that's why yeah. sports are great. And Ohio State then wins the national championship under now former – man, that's another thing that – I'm a Buckeye fan, and that one really – Hits home. Trestle no longer being the coach. Sure. And they go with the year, and with um, the interim head coach, and then they hire um, Urban Meyer, and who has to go a year without the with uh, any postseason. That's really tough to pull off the recruiting tactics. How is he going to get? He's probably going to load up better than anyone, making sure that team is confident, ready to go for the following season. So he gets two years ahead of time to reload to have his system in place before. He has a shot at the, the postseason. You talk about scandals, though. You just go to college football. Yeah, Holy and this cow. was over tattoos, and this sure. one is minuscule compared to the others, like the Sandusky one. Sure, I mean. Minuscule, and they lost Trestle his job because the poor guy tried to sweep it under the rug, and he reported to his superior. How about Pete Carroll at USC? Oh, I mean, man. when he, he just, he the just, guy's a genius. He just took off, and it seemed like he He is the tornado his, of college <laughs> tornado, sports. That's right. He blew right out of there. I mean, you think, why, why leave USC? And then you find out why. Then there's Bobby Petrino. 
Uh, Speaking of tornado leaving the Atlanta Falcons, when he right. realized Vic wasn't coming back, and he went to the Arkansas, builds a great, outstanding program there, and then hello, and you know that happens. Yeah, and that, the way he the left way. Atlanta, because I I follow NFL more than college, yeah. but just the way he did it, I mean, he left notes. He didn't even on a cocktail napkin or something. That's like that. right. He, he didn't even he couldn't even it. do it face to face with the team, and you can't respect a guy like that and. I, I root against people like that. I hope he never wins anything. And then the day of, he's at a press conference in, already in Arkansas while they're reading the letters. Sure. And he still takes heat for that, which is funny. You listen yeah. to... Warwick Dunn? Yeah, anybody. You know, sports sports talk radio, and any yeah, anybody will just uh, crack at him. And he, he probably gets the last laugh, but anyway. Yeah. Yeah, he's no longer the coach at Arkansas, so that was a nice, lovely scandal there, too. <laughs> There's so many, I can't even amazing. keep track of them. But, hey, you know, we're human. That's right. We're human. It makes it more fun for us. The human element of sport. And we're going to call Chris Stoinoff. Thank you for that that last segment. That was very Yeah, that was cool. I mean, you just... Co-pilot Rico Slamming well, we here. Do. No, it's a pleasure to be here. This is the first time I've worn headphones. I think in college once I interviewed my bosses who owned a pizzeria for some college assignment so this is my first time uh since on the air here on the air all wnyradio.com the thomas loop heard wednesdays at 8 p.m we're streaming online live on Ustream. you could take a look at us 24 hours a day or just plug your plug you know put a blindfold up and not see my ugly mug <laughs> you could take a look at rico if you want though <laughs> we're gonna give chris stoyan off a call niagara county of new york state historian also, try owner of a, a media melting pot, NiagaraHub.com. You can catch that. He's also proprietor, sole proprietor of Stens TV. He's just he's just a he's right around our age, late thirties. But but the knowledge this guy has, and we'll talk about the Walenda Walk and his idea behind the T-shirts, and so on and so forth, because it basically was a worldwide v- event here. We're going via Skype. Area code seven one six four zero two four two one eight, and we're giving. Nickname is Stens. A call. I want to find out the story behind his nickname. Why Stens? get voicemail i will immediately terminate the call hey this is chris and we will get back to him momentarily but before we do we're going to play another track from the main street music and art festival i think it's noteworthy because it is a somewhat of a follow-up from it is a follow-up any way you look at it from the walenda walk uh and uh it was a success again the media covered it did a very outstanding job the area newspapers the tv networks and uh here at all wnyradio.com we're following up on it too so we're going to play a track while i contact chris stoinoff of niagarahub.com and stens tv here at all wnyradio.com <laughs>
Houston, New York based yeah! band. Wow, that was a nice delayed reaction too. That was cool. Like they didn't realize the song was over and like these guys are I'm serious, this band had people it was the delayed reaction, like these guys are and then you just heard the cheer afterward. Very young band inside their early twenties. They produced uh, the self titled C D. It's out now. You can find them on Facebook, Mechanico and I'll be posting it on my Facebook page. Your Thomas Loop TM is on Facebook, Twitter. I also have a like page to Thomas Loop TM in parentheses. Um, uh, legalized trademark as of late May this year. Excited to begin the branding process of the Thomas Loop, which began here in the studios. Just an idea, and it morphed into what we have right now here at allwnyradio.com. Uh, many shows, ex exactly all four shows, exactly are up for a WBNY 91.3 award for best broadcast podcast. And like I said, whoever wins from here wins out. Like, everybody wins. And, you know, the polls are out. Not sure when they're done. But their Facebook uh, polls, again, my band, my, my well, our project, I, I try to say my as least as possible because Aaron's an outstanding musician. We're teammates in college. Now we're teammates as musicians. We're called Acoustic Mile. You can find us on Facebook. Noah Goki and the Skulls, their, their full band is up for a music award in a separate category, Best Rock Band, I believe, and they're outstanding. You should check them out on Facebook, which reminds me, Noah, the flagship, Noah's Ark show of allwnyradio.com is heard weekly Wednesdays at 8 p.m. or at 6 p.m. on allwnyradio.com. We're streaming live on Ustream. Also, we're online at allwnyradio.com. Hit the live tab and you're on the air where you get a quality audio feed. It is a user-friendly web page that has been transitioning over the past year or so uh, from the old format. So we try to make it easier for you as the listener because this is internet radio and we want as much access to you, the listener and watcher, as possible because it is a very tough business to be in this internet radio. Uh, Rico, your thoughts about the show so far? We've had Dave Ross on momentarily uh, about... I would say about a half hour or so ago. And what are your thoughts on it? I've had a great time being here. Um, like I said, I haven't been on a show or a radio show or put on headphones like this in a long time, only a second time ever, and hopefully not the last time. No, you're always invited. All right, no cool. sweat. Yeah, no, no sweat. but I, uh, yeah, I've enjoyed it. I've enjoyed myself. Time is moving right along. Yeah, this is, this is great. And thoroughly, we're playing local musicians to a, hopefully a wider audience, hopefully getting the word out. This is the follow-up from the festival. Uh, I want I like to close the book on things when it comes to some, some events in general. Sure. And I, I would like to put it on my shoulders. I can only do so much. The news media can only do so much. The TV and radio media can only do so much. We try to do the same thing here at all, WNYradio.com. Now, you said earlier, Tom, that was your first emceeing opportunity at that the was, festival? That was my first emceeing opportunity. How'd it go? What'd it, you think? It was a very... I, I just think practicing over and over here and over the years, being a former broadcast major at my junior college, and then transitioning into Buffalo State College, based in Buffalo, New York, on Elmwood Avenue, which my degree and background is in public communication. That's PR writing, copy, and advertising copy. And my duties were behind the curtain. I employed every tactic I learned through the years, especially at Buffalo State College, for this particular event to do everything behind the scenes and then get up to the microphone and, you know, event planning, like someone needed a table here, simple things. That's PR, too. That's the dirty work. Uh, two, formulating ideas when you're up on the mic and you stand up there and you start speaking, you want to make sure you have the crowd's attention so you can steer them to the other stage because there was a stage about a block back and to the right. So you want to steer them back so that the vendors can get business and the artists can get business. And then I go to the stage there. If there's a minor break or a glitch in the power, which did happen for about 10 minutes, I get up there, react quickly, tell them to not stay put but check around the vending. I'll be here to notify you to start up. Examples like that. And, and it just came, it felt good, it felt natural. And I had a, a great time, a great time there. I did the first day, too, it was uh, June 23rd in Niagara Falls, New York, USA. That was the 2012 Main Street Music and Art Festival. And you heard Mayor Dicer is gonna be next year. The first year was the toughest one to pull off because it was supposed to happen in 2010. There's a whole story behind that. We'll go to another time about it. Always is, the first one is, is always the toughest. And this was year two? This was year two. Year three, they gonna ask you back to MC? 
I, I would hope so. I'd be honored to do it again. I'd like to, even a larger capacity to have an opportunity to do it. I, I enjoyed it thoroughly. I feel that I have more to give to them because I felt like I wasn't doing enough at times. So, you know, it just I just that's my work. That's what I love to do, PR. And, and I had the opportunity to do it hands on live for the first time in a pretty large audience. And, and, you know, we were there for the city and hopefully the tourists came. We didn't know if they were. I mean, I'm assuming that tourists did come, but I was so tunnel vision because I had to shoot down the main road and then turn right and, you know, help people if they were in trouble. And I was actually handing out flyers because people were asking. So I had backup flyers. Here's the itinerary. Uh, here's when they go on. Everything you need's right here. So I was handing out extra flyers I held from past events whether or not I was showing up at open mics or regional events, and I would hand them out, but I'd save them. I'd do it sparingly because you can't just leave that stuff on a windshield. What good is it going to do on the, the street when it blows off your wiper? So I did that there, just the little things. I tried my best to keep it as tight as possible for the others to work as freely as they possibly could before they got back on stage to put their bands up, get them ready. They don't need to have those uh, outside problems, so that's why they put me in place there. We're going to give Stens another try here pretty soon? I haven't heard back contact-wise. Stens, you're welcome to call. Uh, I'm going to hold out a little bit. Sure. If I don't hear back from him, I just won't try and contact him on via Skype. I'll, I may adjust, but whatever. Uh, you're here at allwnyradio.com. This is the Thomas Loop. We're going into the final three tracks that I um, selected here. And uh, this one in particular, I will give you the title of the band afterward. I'd like you to hear the tune first and then give you the title of the band afterward. And no, that isn't BS. I'm just, it's just <laughs> an idea. We're going to play it here live at allwnyradio.com. <laughs> I got it. 
Main Street Music and Art Festival, the 2012 version. They were the headlining band of the Saturday night, and man, that was a hell of a turnout, it sounded like, from when you heard that crowd. Yeah, that and uh, nothing to eat up some airtime like a nine-minute track. That was great. <laughs> no, good music. Bill, Very good music. Bill Withers' cover. I was surprised they, that, man, everybody was getting into that <laughs> tune, and they jammed it. Like, it was seamless. How many bands total? 28. Wow. Yep. 28 total, two stages. And uh, man, it was a it was a it was a success again. Success. Something uh, I'll have to check out next year. I have not been either this year or last, but it seems like it's growing. And it, it's strange. And, and I didn't bring this up. I was one of the acts the year before, and then I you know and then I did it from the other end. So it's like now when I think about it, yeah, yeah. A ask ask me back. <laughs> <laughs> I'll definitely do it again. Um, I want to thank Rick Krogan and Becky Marchetti for doing an outstanding job. Rick Krogan was the the driving force. He's also um, an employee at the Sheridan Fort Points Hotel down in uh, Niagara Falls, New York, on Buffalo Avenue. He is the beverage and um, also the music booking manager. Uh, and he's had experience from working in New York City over the s uh, several years and then moved back and to establish himself in the Niagara County community. And this was his idea, along with John Hutchins over at Rapids Theater. And they, they wanted to get this thing going, and they did an incredible job just to get it off the ground because it's very, very tough, and this is not to slam anything at all. Just from the culture over the decades, Niagara Falls is slowly getting back. Uh, it's very tough to convince a panel that has been beaten and busted up for so long, namely the councilman and the mayor, to pass something to have this happen. And they, too, deserve credit for giving the opportunity, like saying, giving the okay for it to happen. Because it sure is they do. It is extremely difficult to convince. Like, they're used to negativity, uh, feedback, so on and so forth, which also takes me back to the, the Walenda walk. What a relief. Mayor Deister his administrators, the media, the constant negativity. 
that they get. What a relief it must have been to see the USA Today article printed and just to see the city exposed the positives and the negatives. And but they, mostly and, positive there. Yeah, and mostly positive. But when the negatives were released, the whole country read that. And what a relief to them. It must have been like a weight of it was lifted off their shoulders because they've been punching bags for decades, these, these administrators and uh, people in the political arena of New York, uh, Niagara Falls, New York, USA, and then they get to see this happen, and that's that was great. And is that day approached, that Friday walk, June, was it 13th? June 15th. 15th, June 15th. As that day approached, there were still... Two days before. Yeah, just some really heavy doubts that this thing was going to uh, be pulled off, and it turned out the, execu the execution was, uh, was perfect. What happened to the, there was some fallout two days before the Niagara Parks wanted to pull the plug. And I know why, and they know why they wanted to pull the plug. And again, it comes with the culture over the years and so on and so forth. What they know with just being okay with being okay, they have jobs with the state, they're pending pensions. None of the people there had no ex any experience whatsoever doing an event like this, of course you're going to get scared off, so then you use defensive tactics like treating the guy like a quote-unquote criminal. Trying to pull the plug, he's a stunt, and more people will do it. If they're going to do it, they're going to do it. Like the barrels, the, sure. I mean, it's a legend, it's a daredevil, it's an, it's an iconic sight around the world to come watch, USA and Canada, the horseshoe in American Falls. And that negative vibe that just exists just, in, in this city and in other depressed cities it really i mean if it did not go off imagine can you imagine the feeding frenzy it would have been oh typical niagara falls or here we go again and i it would have been tough to recover from because this was a this was a big event this was a national event a worldwide event and uh it was it was great that it went off we're going to go back into the music stens is contacting me right now and, man, we'll get back to that walk momentarily. I can't wait to talk to him about it. More music from the Main Street Music Festival 2012. Music and Art Festival, pardon me, because they wanted to both employ the art and music combo. And it, and it was a success. Uh, held in Niagara Falls, New York over the weekend of June 23rd, 24th, 2012. Here on all radio.com. There's a song called Dead Air, and that's not really good. <laughs> it definitely is not good. What a good. tune. Here we we go. have a call coming in. Chris is saving the day here. <laughs> AllWNYRadio.com. Welcome Chris Stoyanoff, Niagara County historian of New York State. Also proprietor of Stens TV. You can check that out. He'll give you the info. And also a try... Uh, I would say a dry owner at NiagaraHub.com, a media, I call it the media melting pot of the area. Chris, welcome to all w Welcome to AllWNYRadio.com. Chris Stoyanoff, also known as Stens. Thank you for joining us, and thank you for calling us. How's it going, buddy? How you been? Hey, it's going very well here. Going very well. Why don't you give a brief explanation? We'll start off with the, the historian aspect. What okay. was... Yes. What, what happened... Yeah, what happened in general? Like, were you approached about this particular position? What, how did this come uh, about? Yeah, I was approached by a couple people uh, that are historians, Paul Gramoziak, uh, William Bradbury, um, a few other people in the area that said, you know, they wanted a young guy to, uh, younger generation, I guess, to help out. Um and then ex explained it a little bit to me, and then next thing you know, Mayor Dyster had asked if I'd be interested, and I thought it was a good opportunity, uh, something good to volunteer for, um, and uh, I accepted. Chris Stoyanoff, also known as Stens, here at allwnyradio.com. He's in the Thomas Loop. We thank him very much for the time. Previous, we spoke with uh, Dave Ross of NBC Sports, a candid interview regarding the Olympic trials for track and field held in Oregon. The Thomas Loop is heard Wednesdays at 8 p.m. here at allwnyradio.com. We stream live on Ustream. You can see us on demand. Um, Stens, the name Stens. How did uh, that, how, what is the, is there a 
underlying story, or is it just a uh, how did it how did it come about? Uh, it's actually one of those meaningless high school nicknames. I think the uh, <laughs> the uh, intelligence level of my buddies at the time was that my last name starts with an S T and uh, Stenzel. Oh. My buddies. My buddy's stepfather's last name started with an S T. I mean, it's that lame of an origin, but uh, <laughs> then they just kept on calling me Stens, like you know, over and over again. And the next thing you know, it stuck. And then it became a brand about Stens TV. Yeah. Explain Stens well, TV. Well, I wanted. I did. I did. Started my own blog um, about five years ago, and uh, really, I did a you know a little bit of mix of humor, a little bit of vintage uh, retro arcade kind of stuff, comic book stuff, things I like like that. Uh, you know, TV sitcom humor, that kind of stuff, uh, along with other things that are more locally oriented, like. Uh, you know, an announcements for local organizations, and then I got involved with Niagara Rises, so I, yes. you know, I would even post some things about uh, their upcoming meetings. There's a little serious side to it, too. You could enjoy some entertainment and look at some goofy stuff while you're online and also, uh, you know, learn a little bit about the stuff going on in the area. That then evolved into uh, the site that we're running full-time now, which is NiagaraHub.com. Yes, and ex to explain, Niagara Rises Incorporated is based in Niagara Falls, New York. It is a non-for-profit organization held together by committee members to improve the, the well-being of cur those currently living in the city and those bringing the goal of bringing former residents and new residents back to the city. And they have a bunch of programs spawning into that, which leads to, um, Chris, now the NiagaraHub.com concept, you have three you and two other individuals involved in it. it's like it's a pretty uh, lethal combination. I mean that in a good sense because you have a former <laughs> editor in sports journalism, uh, you having a journalism background, and another gentleman has been involved in journalism, and you've you've combined this great atmosphere. And I've stopped by here. Niagara Hub is located on Main Street. Can you give the address to those who are listening outside the town? Uh, yes, it's six thirty Main Street. It's uh, right sideways to uh, the post office on Main Street. Big sign, you can't miss it, big parking lot. Um, yeah, the website is www.niagarahub.com. Um, and you can get on there, click around, and see some of the awesomeness. Chris Stoyanoff here in the Thomas Loop on allwnyradio.com, heard Wednesdays at 8 p.m. Going further about the concept, what was the driving force that had this media engine get off the ground? Uh, the driving force was a combination of com and Tim Schmidt's uh, website, which was Lewiston-based, which is belowthefalls.com, and then using uh, some of Craig Avery's uh, business savvy, the three of us got together, and then um, you know the, all three of us went together as one and made the, uh, the media source of our own. How would you describe that media source in uh, comparison to other social media, print, TV, radio, anything in, in comparison, how would you describe best what NiagaraHub.com is all about? I think locally there really isn't anything as uh, open and balanced and welcoming as Niagara Hub as far as asking for contributions from anybody that wants to do anything as far as writing, photography, art, uh, reporting. You could go, if you're a you know, a huge fan of your grandma's meatballs, you could do a story about that and send in a recipe or, you know, anything, anything like that. Um, you know, we're giving everybody not only a chance to express themselves, but we're also at the same time trying to provide news, local news, uh, historical news, uh, current events, all at the same time. So you might get distracted by a humorous story or a, humor, a humorous editorial, but at the same time, you can find out what national news is going on and also locally. So it's kind of a, a one-stop shop for uh, your daily dose of, you know, what you can download into your brain. Chris Stoyanoff aboard here at the Thomas Loop, all WNYRadio.com, which leads me, you have a, a gift, a talent, graphic design, you get sh uh, shirts produced. And the one I'm wearing, yes. again, backtrack to the atmosphere and what it was like, the Nick Willenda walk party, uh, the, the, the parties all over the place, you held one at Niagara Hub, uh, several other venues held at Old Fall Street USA, which is um, working for a subsidiary, uh, Comcast Global Spectrum. And they had all these concepts up. 
but you yourself decided to take it to another level and produce. And we, my 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 co-host right here with me, Rico Slayman, will be speaking with you shortly. Um, this T-shirt design with the the tightrope walk on the top of the Niagara Falls logo, I, I think it is it's genius, and I, I wear I, I swear I probably wear this T-shirt today. What was your thought process of putting that together and producing it and selling it? Uh, well, I just wanted to make a cool shirt that I would wear. Uh, you know, I like kind of the vintage or the retro looks on things. Um, so I made something that I would like, Niagara Falls based, and then slipped in a little Walenda S character uh, between the the A and the F walking a tightrope. And next thing you know, it was a shirt that I liked. So I asked a few people if they thought it was cool. They they thought it was. They said they'd buy one. And so I made you know 50 of them to sell which then led to other designs for that night of the Melinda Walk, which we uh, we had a tent up at our party um, vending, just trying to go along with the city's request for the citizens and small business owners to take part in the night. So we decided to have a little bit of a, a summer festival of our own down the street. And which will be playing from your featured band, one of the tracks from the Main Street Music and Art Festival in 2012, the hard rock champion of... Uh the Hard Rock Rising of the Niagara Falls region, Hard Rock uh, Whiskey Reverb, they were there. Uh, yeah. Backtracking, uh, will there be more shirts being made? Because these shirts, I, I've been getting compliments about this shirt everywhere. I saw two tourists actually going back into the Walenda post, pre, cool. uh, going into the pre-Walenda walk on this day off, right around the mid to later evening hours before the walk happened. Two tourists were wearing it, and they said, where'd you get this from? I said, I bought it from, I, I supported a friend, I purchased <laughs> it from him, and they said, we really like this shirt, and I, I believe they were from the south. I couldn't really catch the accent, but they were not from around here, and they, they really appreciated the logo and design, and people were commenting about the shirt all night. I mean, Great. Yeah. Will there yeah, be... we're, we're going to be we're gonna be selling them uh, on Old Fall Street throughout the summer during the, the summer concerts. We're also selling them at the uh, local festivals. Like we just uh, we had a tent up at the Main Street Music and Art Festival, and we'll be doing the Italian Festival on Pine Avenue in August. Um, you know, making them accessible to everybody. You know, to get a different kind of souvenir um, for the area. You know, whether you're a resident or a tourist, an actual quality T-shirt. You know, I like T-shirts, and um, you know, you can put an expression or two on them. Uh, and I'd like to just express the hometown pride. Um, so, which, you know, led me to do that and then take part in the offerings of the city, trying to get people to do vending and set up a market space and, uh, small businesses of their own. So we used that as a micro small business, I guess, of the Niagara hub. I'm going to bring it over to Rico Slame and he's flying co-pilot. He's the guest tonight here with me, the Thomas Loop. Uh, do you have any questions for Chris? Well, first of all, Chris, thanks for coming on tonight and great shirt. I, I was one who complimented Tom. He's wearing it tonight and I came in and said, how do I get one of those shirts? And uh, I think I'll purchase mine at the Italian Festival, which is, I believe, the first weekend of August, if, uh, yeah. if I'm yeah. not mistaken. You can also, if anybody you know wants to, out there listening, go to hubtees.com. It's H-U-B-T-E-E-Z.com, and that just basically takes you to a page on the Niagara Hub well, where you can see the other designs, uh, the local alumni shirts that I made, um, and email me in, uh, if you want one. Cool. Chris, thank you. Thank you, for, thank thank you, you very you. much. Hey, thank you very much for your time here in the Thomas Loop and all WNYRadio.com, and you're welcome here anytime. Awesome. Thank you very much. Sounds great. Take care. Take it easy. That was Stens, Chris Stoinoff, multi-talented, multi-tasking. I don't know how he does it. He made it. He yeah. made it on the show, and, yeah, uh, yeah very well-spoken. Yeah, he's a, he's a good guy. He's Located in Main Street, Niagara Falls, New York, is Niagara Hub. That is his latest venture with Tim Schmidt and uh, Mr. Craig Avery. And tourists, residents, check the place out. It is an open environment. It is a melting pot. You you have a concept. They have network gatherings inside every Friday. You bounce ideas off each other. And, again, it's the networking concept. Uh, every, everybody wins out. Everybody wins out. Just give it an opportunity, NiagaraHub.com. And we're going to go to the close of the show. And now the final band in which I'm going to play are the 2012 uh, Hard Rock Rising Champions of the Niagara Falls Hard Rock Restaurant. They were in the hunt for the London uh, opening for Bruce Springsteen, I believe, the concert there. They were top 20 in the voting. They were hovering for a little while. And these guys are super talented. Uh, I've had the honor of um, 
having uh, with an acoustic mile event my idea to pitch them to help I, I want to help these guys I, mean, I consider them good friends of, and I wanted to help out and see if they liked the idea I pitched to them uh, we had uh, local media coverage and television YNN your news network uh, Time Warner cable based uh, news news uh, source out in Buffalo New York they came out to check it out and we had a couple of videos up of us jamming together and they were just five I, I they're five very talented people that you would never expect to be in the same band together. You have a rapper, A.J. Amherst, who has got a background of English from the University of Buffalo. Jim Candytree, who's an extremely intelligent, very smart musician. He, he looks like he can he conduct. Everybody has a role. Super talented vocalist. You will hear it in this song, uh, produced by uh, Whiskey Reverb. And, and uh, it's a cover of Genuine's uh, Jump On It. Uh, you'll hear the talented voice of Jamie Kern and blues guitar. They had a guitarist um, alongside him, too. Uh, just the, the combo, outstanding bass player and Tony Bells and a great drummer and Scotty Harrington. And you can hear Jim Candytree and Scotty Harrington every Tuesday at 6 p.m. for the Candyland Countdown, in which they count down the best local original acts in what they call the 716 area code and their own show here at allwnyradio.com. Rico, thank you very much for your time. It's been a it's been a fun ride. It sure has. And thank you for giving me the opportunity yeah. and maybe we'll do it again we before will. too long. Definitely we will be doing this again. I want to thank Dave Ross of NBC Sports uh for his candid interview. He's on site. He's literally involved with the network. He's the spotter. Um for all distance races, men and women. He gave us a great interview, insight into uh, what he does. We, we want to plug his business. It's RossRunning.com. You can find it on Facebook and RossRunning.com in, in and of itself. There's a like page on fa Facebook. He does a coaching service as, long, as well as going from meet to meet, working for contracting out to networks. And we also thank historian of Niagara County in New York State, Chris Stoyanov, multi-talented um, individual he he and two other individuals produce niagara hub a media resource the melting pot of media i call it as well as stents tv you can find that on there stents tv.com as well as the blenda t-shirts he brought up to you here we now conclude the thomas loop for this week june 27th on wednesday with the whiskey reverb from the main street music and art festival here at all wnyradio.com Keep an eye on me on Facebook and Twitter. You can look me up at Thomas Loop TM. The Thomas Loop TM is a legal registered trademark. And as, as I continue to try to move up in the world of media and so on and so forth. Thank you for listening. You can call us anytime, 24 hours a day, area code 716-402-4218. Stream us live 24 hours a day on Ustream under allwnyradio.com. The other four show, three shows are on there. You can check us out. We do have podcasts on iTunes and FeedBurner. We're under all WNY Radio Podcast Network. All you do to access that under the search, it is free to download anytime. Thank you for listening, everyone. You won't want to get